On the floor of my room, just so I could have a little more space for the stoop. I get discouraged a lot, encouraged a lot, watch courage a lot. All because the surface was hot. From doubts, I was looking for change through the season and counts. Started making nasty tracks like I will clean in the house. To get a little sign, flip the script and then dip on my Mix the shit with my chips on ground. Hit the spliff and that shit on mine. The great thoughts of AZ, go sound like Swayze. But feel what's up like Hades, trying to get M's on M's like Shady Jay-Z, baby. Everybody with pastry. I'm trying to reach levels that God hasn't even seen. You guys searching them. I'm not searching it. It's a pat down. The gentleman stopped us and put the, put the concrete down, right. stating that some people that were standing there in that group that you were in, there was this group that was touching the concrete. Right. It was an arrestable offense. Because you stepped on the concrete. Yes. Because they said it, it, you were doing it on purpose and that that is criminal damage to property. I didn't step on the concrete. I'm not saying you. We're saying that he said the group. He pointed to the group and he pointed from the cops. You want to film what the cops are doing. You want to try to get badge numbers. You want to try to get cop car numbers. Um, you want to let's say you see, say you're walking down the street. You see something going down across the street. Ideally, you want to be like somewhere like kitty corner. And, that's, and if you are right up next to it, you want to stand like six arm lengths away, far enough to where they can't be like jumping at you. Um, something else you want to always be doing is not filming the person being harassed. Because you never know, you, 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 we always advocate for radical consent. So, um, if, you, if possible, you want them to know, be okay with filming if you don't know the person involved. You want them. I was saying that we can capture our moments in time, meaning like, because like a lot of people say words can say a lot of things, but like once you put in the photos and videos, it explains it all. Um, it's real photos and real videos footage that young people do for a living. So it's like, on the outside world, it's like always these old people and they have like their different opinions and stuff. But like us young people. We so should. like your mindsets and views? Yes. Oh. You know, like our video squad lets us show the work we've done in the community and protest workshops or classes that we attend and they capture real things in real moments. So meaning like, like all the workshops we've been going to, it's like... We get to put our words out, express ourselves. Our purpose is to film not only for us, but for our community. I see something about the police brutality. They could say like, oh, the police are doing nothing to us. They're like, they're so nice. They show like the good things about them. But like, once we take photos, like real photos and all that, it's like, we show a whole different understanding of it. Like, So like the uncensored version, what's yeah. really happening. It's kind of like the behind the scenes action. Yeah. So yeah, the photo will make a difference because it shows. 
Okay. What else do we want to say about that? Like they, they know they're tears. They just choose to cover it. So they don't look that way because you can't call other people tears and right. yourself be a tear. So they feel like one of the biggest the world. So they're hypocritical. Yeah, they, they are hypocritical because they are called other countries. And, all and then we're... Yeah, so you are yourself. Yes, yeah, we are ourselves. You are the victims of terrorism. You're you different like victims mom. showing a different story. It's not just like we one similar victim. event. Well, it's like different ways. I understand. Terrorism. I understand. What are the stories? Are they real stories? Yeah. Because there are real yeah. stories around you. Right? You just experienced six months of real terrorism, real time, on your generation. What do you want to be a chief? Like, what do you want? What What's the, the get out? To people to. Um, America to listen. Victims don't even acknowledge that they're victims of terrorism. So it's just like you can't. So it's very, it's very few people that can like they think about this. Like oh that yeah, um, like America terrorizes its own victims. So we also like I really want to just get across that they need to acknowledge that they're being terrorized because we right like we can't accept the whole country to turn around if they can't realize what's happening. That, that's the thing. That's that they the need to acknowledge what they're doing because they can listen and just Okay, be like, so you oh. want reparations. Yeah. Because so there's a movement in Chicago for reparations, right? Mm -hmm. So you're so that's a demand. So this whole thing is now victims of terrorism, we want our 40 acres in a mule. You didn't give it to us the first time. Let's go. And so then that means y'all need to research the ordinance that's been put on the table. There is an, a, an ordinance that's on the table right now that's for victims of police abuse, victims of police abuse slash terrorism. You know, maybe you want to narrow it in. The reparations ordinance was introduced at City Council in October of 2013. Um, the reparation ordinance itself came out of the work of the um, Chicago Torture Justice Memorials, which came together in early 2011 after John Burge, um, a police officer who had been responsible for directly and indirectly torturing um, over 118 uh, black men and women in Chicago over a period of 20 years from 1972 to 1991. Okay. Now, um during that 25 years or 20 years of working with the Chicago Police Department, did you come across uh, instances of police torture? I will adapt my prior answer to the first question as my answer to that question. Uh, are you taking your Fifth Amendment rights? It's, that's correct. The important thing to know is that he was then convicted in 2010 for perjury um, charges about lying about his participation in torture. He was never really convicted or held to account for the actual torture that he uh, either did himself or authorized his men, mostly men, to do, um, who were fellow officers. So out of that period of kind of people not knowing what else to do around quote unquote getting justice, the Chicago Torture Justice Memorials emerges with an idea to uh, ask artists and other people to envision uh, kind of a more expansive view of what justice might look like for torture survivors. And they use the arts to push that. They ask people for speculative memorials. The ordinance becomes a part of those speculative memorials, um, something that people could, you know, kind of think about and uh, help to kind of consider an alternative view of what justice might look like for survivors of police torture. Because of the confluence of the trip to Geneva, the Ferguson uh, uprisings, uh, the Black Lives Matter kind of revival of people really wanting to focus on pushing for justice through that uh, mobilization, and so we began to think about what would we do in a concerted effort to try to pass the reparations ordinance. We decided that right after um, We Charge Genocide did an open kind of report back to the community where I think almost 300 people showed up for that at Roosevelt University in early December, that we would announce a march the next week, um, a several mile march, five mile march from the Chicago police headquarters 
over to City Hall. And that was, I think that happened on December 16th. And that kind of was the official kickoff for what we began to call the ROM Rep Now, Reparations Now mobilization and campaign. But of course, you know that that we are st we were standing on the shoulders of people who'd been already fighting for 30 years before that to try to bring this torture to light, to try to get the death row 10 off death row, to try. So it's part of this longer, ongoing struggle for justice for police torture survivors. So it wasn't, it's not a struggle that's decontextualized from the history of the other struggles that have happened. And in fact, many of the people who were involved in this intergenerational inter everything campaign to pass this ordinance um, were people who've been working on this from almost the beginning of when it came to light.